boy. And uh, I'm also going to just record the stream, even though we can download it, because uh, episode 64, I couldn't download, so I couldn't upload it on Anchor, which is really annoying. It like still won't let me download it for whatever reason. Really? Yeah, just like one of our episodes won't let me download it from our is YouTube. That the, is that the one that I did? No. Oh, no, 64. No, oh, yours one is weird. fine. Huh. Yeah, yeah so. that's really, really strange, because I thought mine was going to have some issues, because... I know on YouTube you have to actually press like start stream and then it starts or something like that. There's a bunch of weird stuff going on back there. Hello, A B Hamden. How's it going? What's the A and the B stand for? Jenkins, why do you always gotta ask these really personal questions to people? What if I don't know, man. I feel like I know people. <laughs> That's it. What if he's uncomfortable talking about it? I suppose if you're uncomfortable, I'm sorry for asking, but uh you know, nothing to be uncomfortable about in, in, in life. That's all I got to say. It's, it's, you know, it's just, it's just you and it's okay to be you. Why is uh, Jenkins starting his own YouTube? I actually had my own YouTube the entire time. It's just nobody watched my videos. Yep. Uh, my recent ones happened to blow up. I did one that was like, I was going to do like a road to 7k series where as I got to, as I like worked from six to 7k, I recorded my, my thoughts, but I put the first one out and uh, the the comments on it were pretty were pretty good, but I was uh, young and dumb back then, so I was discouraged by the fact that it got that it got no views. But uh, that's just how it is when you when you start with uh, posting videos after a long time, people people just like don't know you exist. The YouTube algorithm doesn't know you exist. Yeah, I I'm gonna be trying to stream regularly. I'm I, like I have a schedule that I really want to follow, which is gonna be like basically like four to five games per day streamed on my own channel and then just like trying climbing to immortal and just documenting that um so i will be streaming my pubs i just have been nice inconsistent because i've been sick over the last couple days yeah it's hard to see that's why streaming is hard like i know i'm I'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna say we're, we're, we're like youtubers right at this point we're not streamers we stream as like a side thing to you know interact with with like subscribers and and it's like it's a different thing it's like a tertiary thing for us so um but i can say i can say that like when i when i was trying to stream it's kind of hard because you don't have you don't have the freedom to like just stop and go do something yeah you know you you have to keep going it is um, it is really weird like that's one of the things i hate about streaming is because i like to be able to play a couple games and maybe like get up and go do some stuff and then come back and play a couple games. But if you're streaming, then your viewers just leave. (laughs) If you take like a 15 minute break or something like that. Yeah. And and, you know, I I say this every time I feel like I have to say this. It's not like, you know, we're not (laughs) streamers aren't doctors or like doing hard work, like laying bricks or something like that. You know, there's obviously it's pretty easy to sit in front front of your computer all day and play and play video games. But uh, for me personally, the downsides of it uh, definitely, definitely suck. You know, I like to I like to get up every couple of games and like go do something else, take a walk, yeah, take a break, get a drink, something like that. And uh, if you're streaming, that that's not that's not super uh, super great. Why is Earth Spirit not good right now? Earth Spirit's great. I think Earth Spirit is good. I I saw Crit win a lot with it when it first yeah it's got good patched. There's a there's a few people that are picking a lot of Earth Spirit. I would say that that if people are saying that it's bad, that that's just thinking into the old patch, and it's it's a mentality of like the hero was bad. But I think it's I think Earth Spirits I think Earth Spirits fantastic if you're good at it. It's obviously a very skill based hero. Yeah, I I know it got picked a couple times. I'm curious how many times it got picked in the. Let me All check. I have it. 14 have times. It here. 14 times, 42% win rate. So not great, but also didn't look like it got explored that much. Yeah. It was yeah. mostly picked by like South American teams, actually. That's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Get a lot of that in the NASA pubs, actually. Schofield's a big Earth, Earth Spirit spammer. Yeah, that and makes he's sense. 12 games a day sort of sort of scenario. Dude, that guy's an animal, and his like entire purpose in games is to just feed in the most chaotic way possible. I swear to God, Schofield is is like 
on cocaine or something when he's playing. I mean that in the nicest possible way. I, I legitimately like playing with him against him. It's it, he just breaks Dota. He makes it like so not Dota, which is is really cool. And uh, that's it's actually indicative of his personality. He's he's crazy. He's the sort of guy that like sings into his mic and screams and does memes and while being like rank five. He dude, he just plays whatever. He doesn't play any roles in pubs. He just. He just will pick carry one day, then he's mid, then he's safe, then he or sorry, then he's off lane, then he's support. I I I don't I, the guy's a total wild card. It's ridiculous, and I think it's cool that the rest of Beast Coast are all like falling in MMR and you know like kind of pissed off with Dota from at least what, what I've seen with Hector, like not super uh, enjoying the patch as much as the, as much as they they were, I suppose. Uh, I, I should say, like, they're not as comfortable with this patch. But, man, Schofield's totally in his element. <laughs> He's, like, the yeah. one of them that's, that's like, guys, guys, here, here's how to play. You just be crazy. Dude, I had the privilege of casting so many OG games over the last two days, and those guys are unbelievable. They are the fastest team I have ever seen play Dota. It's Really? It's nuts. It's like, all right. Thompson makes a play here, two people TP, immediately somebody else is getting killed on the other side of the map. Or like uh they make a play somewhere else and then they're instantly going for another kill. And then they're instantly going for another kill. Oh, OG already qualified, eh? Yeah. Cool. It was secret it was, and an OG. It was super easy for them, but uh it was fun to watch just because they Damn, good for female, man. They just good schooled schooled people. Utterly schooled them. Like that's crazy. Yeah, that's really cool. The only game they lost the entire qualifiers was to Liquid, and that was when Liquid got a Monkey King against Amber Spirit matchup mid, and Topson was like two and nine at like fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the Topson classic. Yeah, but, that's really cool. I'm yeah. glad everybody thought like, oh, it's not the old OG. They're gonna be shit, but no. those are some good players, man. Especially with uh, with mid one coming off of coming off of secret and Sumail coming off of EG, you know they have something to prove. Yeah, there's no way that they don't. So yeah, that's that's really cool. Good for them. Yeah, it was it was fun to watch. Um, you want to start the episode? Sure. Yeah, let's give her. All right. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Alchemy Answers, episode sixty three. And if you can see the little tagline, why do weird heroes have super high win rates? So we're going to try and explain that question and some other ones uh, in the following minutes of our ramblings. And we'll also hopefully take some from chat as well. If you'd like to have your questions answered every single week, you can check out the link below, which is patreon.com slash Dota Alchemy, where you can become one of our supporters that helps us sustain the channel and continue to make videos. So thanks for tuning in. And let's hop into the questions, Mr. Jenko. Hello. KB in chat says, good to see Jenkins has gained some independence. Please let your caretaker know that it was nice having her on the podcast last week. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was almost dying when you were doing the intro and I read that. That's funny. Yeah, no, she's uh, she only comes on weekends, actually. So that's, uh, that's why she's not here. Uh, all right, let's get into the questions. So like you said, the first question is related to these kind of niche heroes that seemingly have really high win rates. Uh, let's see, where's the questions? Uh, okay, so Dat Burrito says, Jenkins and Elevated, just a quick question. Just did my nightly check of Dota 2 Pro Tracker and as, uh, as one does and was wondering how the hell Sniper has such a high win rate. So my explanation for this is it's the same reason Death Prophet has a 55% win rate and Weaver has a 58% win rate. The sample size is quite small. So because it's small, that means people are picking it into games where it's very good. Um, I would wager that if you go through a lot of these sniper picks, you'll see that it's uh, either support sniper where it's some very niche player that's that's playing that hero in that way uh and they're playing it in like party queue it's like owie or something doing that so it's 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 a very weird circumstance that's not really indicative of like a a, a good sample size uh or it's a mid sniper picked like against a medusa for example and in that case you know this is one of the hardest counters in the game one of the only heroes that does incredibly well against medusa which people are picking yep 
And uh, sorry, I heard Ellie like banging her keyboard. I think she's really, really mad at, <laughs> at Dota or something. Um, anyway, yeah. So basically, it's it's people are picking it in these scenarios where it's it's phenomenal. And like I said, Weaver's the same. Like I'm personally, I've, I've been playing a decent amount of Weaver, and I'm only really picking it when I see like three or four of the heroes on the enemy team, and I know that they have no disable for Weaver. And then of course, in a game like that, my win rate's going to be sky high because it's 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 a free game, so I have to basically fuck up in order. To have it be a, a low win rate yeah stats can be a little bit misleading especially when it comes to these like win rates because like you're saying it's basically like people who spam the hero and know every single matchup that are still playing it even though it's out of meta or it's like the perfect game for it so yeah that's, exactly that's so the main reason can't, you can't really trust the 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 small sample size in in dota uh, heroes are just like too good when they're played uh, into into heroes they counter. Out of curiosity, when do you think something becomes statistically significant? Like when do you look at an offlane hero and be like, this hero is probably good and I should start playing it? Uh, in terms of Dota 2 Pro Tracker, I would say probably around like, you know, 400, 500 picks. Okay. In, so it, usually in like the last seven days or whatever, um, you'll have like, Five to ten thousand games. So if you have like you know five hundred to a thousand of those are, are a certain hero being picked, then usually that hero is getting picked enough that it's being picked, and there are counters being picked as well. There's basically enough stuff happening that the the hero's win rate is just it's just good, you know, and it's significant. Makes sense. So that's 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 like my number. I don't necessarily know if that's if that's yeah. like scientifically flawed, but no, no, I mean, that, that makes sense. I feel like we usually see like the most popular heroes in the, you know, 1200 to 1800 range for the most part on Dota 2 pro tracker. So if you're at like a third of that, but it's trending in the right direction, then it's probably pretty relevant. Yeah. That's basically what I look for is like something like Huskar has like 606 picks, which is a good amount, but has a 56% win rate. Something like, you know, Underlord or Troll, like these heroes are around like 400, and then they have like a 55% win rate. That's that's pretty significant. Clockwork, 55% win rate, 772 picks. So like, sure, they're not in the top picked heroes where you have Snapfire, who's 2,000 picks, uh, <laughs> but they still are enough that it's like, at least in, you know, a fifth or, or a sixth of games, these heroes are actually uh, being picked. So that's pretty significant. Yep. Uh, okay, let's uh, let us move on. To, I'm gonna move this, these questions over here, so I'm not kinking my neck. Is that a word? Kink. I know uh, one meaning for that word. Is your kink being on this stream? Because that's, that's one of them. Figured. That's one of them. Stain Chip says, "When do you buy Satanic versus Heart on PL? How come Abyssal Blade is being picked up more often on him now versus six months ago?" Uh, with his third skill, it seems like the blink that got added isn't so important for PL. Also, shout out to Donnie. Been, uh, had the best best afternoon. I'm sorry, I'm butchering this uh, this compliment <laughs> to you. Not on purpose. I am jealous, but uh, had the best afternoon watching him casting OG games, and his insights on the game were on point. Hoping to see more of your casting, bro. Thank you, That's sir. Good. Thank you, That's sir. That's good. I mean, I would disagree with the, with the Donnie casting OG part, but yeah, your question is very good. Yeah. Much appreciated for the good question. Uh, <laughs> B minus compliment. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Come on, you can do better complimenting. <laughs> what was got a nice goatee. What the was question the was question? satanic versus hard on PL. Okay. And how come Abyssal Blade is being picked up more often? So the the main reason that Abyssal Blade is being built more on PL than it was six months ago is that it was fundamentally changed to be a completely insane item because it gives you a free blink. Um, the reason that you're picking that up, even though you have the ability to gap close, is that extra mobility is always good. I, I don't think that I've ever played a game of Dota where I'm like, damn, I wish that I didn't have a blink dagger. I wish that I couldn't use this force staff. And I think, generally speaking, like the more mobility you have, the more options you have. So if you can phantom rush into a fight and then like blink onto somebody else with the abyssal blade, that's probably going to give you a lot more options than just like running in and then having to wait for your phantom rush to come off a cooldown. Yeah. Uh, uh, def definitely. Also, I think a lot of the heroes that you are carrying against, it's like life stealer jug, some like slardar with a bash. I don't know, something like that. And uh, the abyssal lets you actually like trade with them and kill and kill the enemy carry through like BKB. 
So I, I think that, I think it's just important, like in a lot of the carry matchups. Sorry to interrupt you. Just I I, I had that thought, but I th- I agree with what you're saying. Like the item is just fundamentally broken right now, but it also is nice that it's good against a lot of these popular carries. Yeah, and then regarding Satanic versus Heart, I think that well, Heart is an okay item. It tends to be very defensive in nature, and Satanic is an item that allows you to play like a madman, which is kind of how PL wants to play. And that item has also been buffed an incredible amount to give you a huge amount of damage, as well as the tankiness, as well as the lifesteal, as well as the stats resistance, and all those things are great for PL. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, like, uh, the... I'm pretty sure illusions get lifesteal now, if if I recall correctly. You can lifesteal off of illusions, I know yeah. that. Um, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't I, know if they change, can... they change. They change it so that illusions get a lot of the things that the regular, like attack speed, for example, because otherwise it was really easy to tell. Anyway, uh, the satanic is is very nice because of the the, the status resistance. Uh, the reason that PL goes heart instead of like PL's the only hero, one of the only heroes in Dota that actually prefers to buy a heart sometimes, and that's just because sometimes if you can just double gang out with the level twenty five talent, yeah. you can just heart heal up to like full HP. In the middle and I would of say a fight. If it's, yeah, if it's a game like that where you can actually get out and in the middle of a fight heal up to full HP, then a, a heart is good. And if you can't, because they have some a, sort of AOE and they're preventing that, then Satanic is probably better. Satanic's also good if they have some some spell that you really need to like reduce the uh, duration of. Like if they have Rupture and they keep rupturing you. Like you you rupture somebody with Satanic Sanjin Yasha and it, it's like they weren't ruptured at all. It's actually ridiculous. Have you seen the PL Mirror Shield bug, Jenkins? I have. Is that still is that still broken? I don't know. But did you see the the Zeus versus PL clip? Yes, I that, saw that. That was some funny shit. <laughs> that is so that is so sad. That is so sad. Yeah, we uh that's 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 <laughs> I would be triggered if that was in my game <laughs> match. Like, the one like fringe weird bug preventing a counter from and like what what are the chances he gets the item too? Like it's just so right. astronomically unlikely for that to ever happen, which is why it hasn't been fixed up until this point. Yeah, because like, people just didn't even know that it existed, probably. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, I haven't even seen a mirror shield in a game yet. I've yeah. played like Christ, I've been playing at least like four to five games per per day, most days, since the patch, and I have not seen a mirror shield. I've been in like two sixty plus minute games. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to think if I have still had tier five items in my games. I'm looking back at my game times. Let me see. All right, I had one game that was over an hour twelve days ago. Was that before the patch, or after it? Not sure. Anyway, yeah. Tier five items. Josh, I like don't oh, even sorry. know what they do. Go ahead. Josh Leach said something in chat. He said, depression has been keeping me from playing. Always love catching you guys. Brightens up my day. Glad to hear that. Um, I've actually been writing a script for a video, kind of recording it, thinking it's shit, going over it again, you know, like that that sort of thing. So I've, I've kind of refined the script to a decent degree, and I've done a, a good amount of research. And uh, my recommendation for for, for that or depression keeping you from from playing or doing whatever you want to do in life is to do something small just do something that makes you feel good and feels productive because there is legitimate neurological science on google the broaden and build theory if you really if you really want to know what i'm referring to it, there is real neurological science behind um giving yourself a rush of dopamine and then using that to essentially cascade to a lot of other positivity and then also productivity. So um, I think you could go make your bed and then maybe you come back and an hour later, you might actually want to play Dota. That might make it worse because it's Dota, but it might make it better if you win a game, then maybe that'll lead to something else and something else and something else. But you just got to, you just got to start somewhere. You know, you got to do something. Get that little rush of dopamine. Your brain is is human, and that's that's okay. That's why they say make your bed every morning because even just that like extra tidying up that takes yeah. literally two minutes can make you feel happy. And right, get it's a rest. legit thing. Yep, it's a hundred percent legit thing. Um, yeah, that's that's like there's there's a ton of a ton of good science behind that. Like brain scans, you know, they they literally uh, looked at somebody's eyes they had an eye scan 
and the person looked around the, the room more, scanning for more information of the physical room when they were positive. Like positivity makes it so that you open your horizons. Uh, like, so, you know, you'll, you'll learn more, which gives more positivity and that spirals. So uh, even if it starts with something small, it's like, we all know from Dota how big the snowball effect is. You feed some Medusa one kill in the laning stage, all of a sudden she's fucking unkillable. You know, so that that shit happens in real life. Like Dota is just an analogy for real life, really. Yeah. So, uh, Wisnu right. in chat. Yeah, let's go to the next Patreon question. But I just wanted to say this real quick. Wisnu in chat says, "Win lane, but lose the game seven out of ten times. What do I miss? Go watch the video that Jenkins posted on his own channel about where Wait. you should farm. Oh, and that will change your life." I was gonna say I literally I literally posted a video about this on our channel. Like yeah. within within a day. Nobody's watching it. Or our <laughs> video. Not... Yeah. Either one. I should have the thumbnail. I, I screwed up the thumbnail. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh stained ships. Oh no, he just that he was asked the uh, satanic heart question. Uh, Eddie Mercury says, I really like starting boots, three tangos on Willow and Shaman because in, the move speed is quite nice for kiting the enemy laners and contesting pull. And it's not a hard commitment anymore because you can ferry out two mangoes and two bounty runes and a salve after with your passive gold. I thought if people are buying headdress on mech buyers and buckler on Vlad's buyers, then first item that I don't see why I can't try out boots. I have to agree with you, actually. Uh, a lot of people are going boots first. I saw Zai go uh, boots first on Batrider. And that's another yep. one of those same things where on Batrider, he would love to go boots or windlace first, but then you don't have enough regen. But guess what? We all have a courier now, so you have no excuse. Uh, I haven't seen a pro or seven AK streamer do it yet, so I want to know whether I'm delusional and griefing my team. No, I think it's. I think you're absolutely right. I like your logic. Uh, if not, oh sorry, sorry. Uh, I watched no, a no, lot no. of of pro Dota over the last couple of days, and a lot of fours are going boots first on several different heroes, like Earthshaker. Um, I've seen pubs of Shaman going boots first, like DJ, for example. Uh, I definitely think that. Especially on a hero like Shaman, who has such good roaming potential as well as really shit movement speed at level one, but good trading ability if you don't have to take a bunch of right clicks to, to hit them. Makes a yeah. lot of sense. Willow, I'm not as familiar with. I would just honestly look at Crit and what he's building because I think he's the best Willow in the world. But um, I don't hate going boots on most fours at this point because you do generally want to be roaming a bit and a lot of fours can benefit from the extra movement speed. Uh, I would say that my my good friend Nusham would always say that uh, sometimes boots are a crutch for people that are bad at positioning. Like, people are too slow getting to runes, so they use boots to get there faster. People are too slow, like, stopping the enemy team from pulling. Their positioning is bad. So I, I would say just definitely be careful with it, buying boots on, like, every hero. I, I, I love your logic, and I definitely agree with it. But there's a, there's a cutoff point where you are just not positioning well enough, and maybe a windlace is enough, maybe no boots is enough, and you would just rather uh, more stats, for example, or, like, I don't know, Basilius for mana regen or Blightstone. I, I don't know. Like, There's tons of other things that you could buy. So I would say that be careful because boots can be a crutch. Um, but the follow-up question, he said, uh, is there a reason to start Headdress as a support if you don't usually buy mech on the hero you're playing? Well, Headdress still builds into Pipe. So Pipe is, if, if you're a Pipe buyer, then I, I definitely I definitely like it. Um, I would say, though, like if, you, you know, if you're a hero that's not going to build a mech or a Pipe, then you're probably a hero that's going to build something with like a buckler or a Vlad's. Like I would say, buckler is like the default. I don't know what to buy item, and it's going to be it's going to be fine at the very least. Like doing ringer protection and then building into an eventual like two three minute buckler is is going to be good. I would say headdress on a hero that isn't going to upgrade it into anything is it's probably not that bad. But the other items are so efficient as well. You can just build those and then upgrade them into like you know Basilius builds into a Veil of Discord for example builds into a Vladimir's offering like there's a lot of good stuff you can build with these small very efficient items yeah I think that you can also just build a headdress casually if you're against a lane that relies on overtime harass like if you're against something like a Venomancer or you know one of these annoying like a Wind Ranger off lane some some bullshit that's just constantly right clicking you but doesn't threaten you unless you run out of region then just having a casual headdress is probably pretty good in your lane 
but you can also build into like a pipe versus Venno. Yep. Wind Ranger, you can build a buckler, and that's going to give you like physical resist. I, I I feel like there's a lot of scenarios where you don't need to go casual headdress, and there's something else that you can be doing that's just as efficient. But it's such a good item that if you have no other option, it's still probably good. It's just a really good item. Yeah. All of the little items are are insane right now. Agreed. Uh, Injective says, I play with a five stack of low to high legend players. Well, you should definitely not play while you're high because it's it's just going to result in you having uh, you know worse dough to play. Uh, except or one low, who, you don't want to play with I, low, depressed people either. So yeah, exactly. Because you, you know you got to play with positive emotions only. You can ask Donnie; like he plays both high and low, uh, actually. <laughs> except for one who's probably low guardian. I enjoy going offline with this five stack, but the issue is the low guardian player typically drags the laning stage down tremendously. But damn, you're putting this guy on blast. Uh, usually ends up feeding quite a bit. I just want to have some casual fun, plus maximize our win rate. What are some good heroes or some roles slash play styles for this Guardian player to try out? Uh, what are some ways that we can play around having a poor laning partner? Something easy like Lich. Just give them Lich. Give them like Ogre. Give them Disruptor. Them that hero is fun. Press your things on the enemy guy, and then there you go. Easy heroes. That's, that's it. I would say Disruptor is like maybe a little too hard in the game to execute, but if they're a Disruptor player... I mean, hell, man, I've seen Guardian players execute shit fine, like, in team fights. It's almost never mechanics. Yeah. It's the issue. I feel like we say this all the time because it's just so obvious after doing, like, any coaching with, with people is that it's, like, mechanics are not the issue. Most people have pretty damn good mechanics. I would say, like, above 50% of the people that I've coached have better mechanics than I do when it comes to fighting and playing their heroes. Uh, you know, and the other 50% is just, like, I played more Dota than them, so my mechanics are better. But it's not, it's not about mechanics. So uh, anyway, yeah, that's why I would see, like Disruptor, Lich, just whatever their most comfortable hero is that's also really easy to play in the laning stage. But I mean, you can also teach them. Just tell them what you want and tell them to do it every time. Like pulling is never bad. Just always pull. That's fine. Make it simple. Yep. And uh, they'll, they'll get better very quickly. And then once it's out of the laning stage, well, it doesn't matter if they're Guardian because you can go do your own thing on the map, you know? I mean, look what we did with Hockey, Hockey Laner. He came in as what? Like a Crusader player? And over the course of like several months, we basically worked on like a couple things in the laning stage per replay review. And now we're at the point where we literally just skip his, his laning stage because it's like there's no problems there ever. It's crazy. It's crazy how much he's – dude, he's Ancient 3 now. Yeah. It's nuts how much he's improved actually. He's going to be divine soon. I can't believe Hockey Laner is going to be divine. He was like – God, he was the way I, I think he was either Crusader or Guardian. He was like bordering on Herald, where he literally only played Unranked. Yeah. And now he's like, you know, you get Divine, you play with pros sometimes. Like, yeah. that's that's the bottom bracket that plays with pros. Yeah. That's pretty good. Back in the old that's matchmaking, I was in Greedy and, and Widges games, like a lot for whatever reason. Pretty damn good, man. Anyway, dude, holy shit, Henry's ranked 684. What happened, Henry? <laughs> He's... Sorry, I'm clicking through, I was clicking through my list to see Hockey Later, and Henry was right, right next to him, so I clicked on it. It happens, man. He loses his shit. I just started playing okay. Dota this month, says Charlie Penn in chat. How do I choose heroes to learn in best position for me to play? I love the question. I, I would question. just try as much stuff as possible, honestly. Like, like, when you're first starting out in Dota, just like try a hero and just try di doing different things and if it's fun and it seems to work then you know take that and experiment off of of your like positive right. reinforcement that's the nice thing about dota is that every hero is so overpowered that every hero is actually viable so if you find something that you really enjoy playing uh there's room for you competitively speaking like, if you become the best at that, you will rank up really fast. You will uh, own people in your games. You'll get a lot of kills. Like, it's 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 really, like, depending on what your personality is. So I, I agree with Donnie in that, like, you just need to figure out what best fits your your personality and uh, stick with it. And unless you get bored, if you get bored, feel free to try other stuff. But don't feel bad about just picking one one guy that you really like playing. Yep. I agree. Uh, Fuzzy says, seeing that you both play a solid amount of games, this question might require a little bit of an imagination. However, what is the best way to improve when you only play three to five games per week? Aside from playing like two heroes in one role and in a situation when you have smaller chunks of time, 
so I can watch videos, listen to podcasts, analyze replays, etc. Uh, but rarely commit to can commit to a game. Uh, thanks, and please work on your self love, Jenkins. You deserve it. Well, that's nice of you. Uh, I'm not going to because I'm a depressed piece of shit. But that's very nice of you. I appreciate that you care. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Uh, I I care about you too, Fuzzy. Hope hope everything's going well. Um, okay, so two to three three to five games per week. I would say my first impulse on that, unless you want to like jump in, if you something you really want to get out. My first impulse on that is that I would absolutely play when I really want to play Dota, like I would, if you had a long drag of a day at work, I would avoid playing. I would try to to play under only optimal circumstances, seeing as, like you don't want randomness and the fact that you're playing a small sample size of games to affect your, the, the outcome. You know, because if, 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 you, if you come home and you're tired as fuck and you waste one of those games because you're tired, then that makes all of the replay analysis and podcast listening and all of that stuff that you that you looked at throughout the whole week kind of not worth anything if if it's just tiredness or something that's preventing you so i would say the the first thing is like maybe play on the weekend play when you're chipper drink a cup of coffee before you play only play one game because maybe the coffee will only last you that long in terms of energy but make sure you have energy make sure you actually uh really really want to play and uh, I, don't, I don't know two three to five games per week I, I don't think that's i don't think that's that bad i think uh no. Not at all. If you spend a lot of time watching pro replays and, and streams and things like that, it's very similar to, to playing. In fact, I would say for a lot of people, they'd be better off doing that because you're actually learning from, from other people. There are plenty of things that you can do to get the, the feeling that you're, that you're playing, um, even outside of like doing drills. So I don't know. I, have, I really don't think it's, it's that bad so long as you're, you know, I, I would say like if you're spending a lot of time listening to podcasts and videos, for example, that's not going to give you the same thing as as playing. It's it's definitely good like tertiary information that you're getting, but uh, I would say that like the number one priority would get in like qu- uh, quantity of of games that you feel like you're playing, whether that's you actually playing or watching or watching pros. Because there were some weeks where I would gain a lot of MMR because I would barely play, and I would only play when I've watched like you know five or six Sardar replays, yep. and I know exactly what pros are doing. Something happens in the game, it's like oh, I remember what Universe did in this situation. Jeez, New Sham always makes fun of me because I, I always bring up just universe as the example. All right, Snake King. Oh, Snake King did this in a game. So I'm gonna I'm gonna you know follow through the way that he did and, and okay, it worked. It's kind of like me playing it. So yeah. yeah, I just watch a lot of replays, basically, I would say. I agree. I uh like I said, I was casting these games, so I, I had to watch several pro matches and I got to watch like the best team in the world, arguably OG. And I went into my first pub and I just had this entire sense of like, this is how I need to orient myself on the map. Like my mechanics were fucking terrible because I hadn't played a game in a week. This is actually the first game that I played today in in a week. And I owned, I owned because I had watched so many games of like the correct way to move around the map and make plays that it didn't matter if I was missing last hits here and there, like, you know, not necessarily landing every single skill shot. I was fundamentally, uh, my approach fundamentally was just better than it has been. So I actually think that playing less and watching more replays is really good. And I noticed that I, I, I kind of go through the same thing sometimes because I have several other obligations in my life and I don't want to always be at a point where I have to the choose sex, it. the sex orgies between playing a game of Dota and then, also, I, I play way worse when I feel like I'm I have to like get this game done in a certain amount of time. So like for example, if if I know that I have to do something in an hour, like that's probably enough time to play a game of Dota, but it might not be enough. And so it at those moments I'll often just be like, Okay, I'm actually just gonna watch a couple of replays and then that's, that's a really, really, really productive way of spending Super that hour. Productive. Yeah. Yeah. If I mean if you care about gaining MMR and Dota that is it's just insanely productive. If you don't care, well, that's that's fine. Nobody's nobody's judging you. I probably CSGO player, whatever. Uh, okay, somebody said who was I want to I want to call them out. I want to be that guy. Uh, somebody says their first time actually catching us uh, live. Uh, where was it? There's so many so many things in chat, which I appreciate. <laughs> uh, uh, where? All right, can't find it. Let's move on. 
Uh, too lazy. Party says, or okay, Wink says, what's the real identity of Ice Frog? Hello, by the way, guy that said it was your first time watching, but I was looking at my other screen and I mis misplaced where your message was. But uh, hello, thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, Wink says, what's the real identity of Ice Frog? Bruno, obviously. Next, uh, as a position five, is it better to get more regen as a starting item or headdress slash Basilius? Depends on the lane. For me, my my decision making on this is in the first like two minutes. If I'm gonna need more than you know three tangos, <laughs> then I'll go like salve, uh, tango, and then a bunch of sticks or or sorry, uh, branches. Branches. Yeah. It's just that that's a synonym for stick is the problem. But you know, I'll go a bunch of regen if if I and then I'll send out like a basilius at like three minutes. Um, if I if I don't think the enemy team has a lot of harass, then I'll go for like a basilius first. I'll go for a headdress first. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, I usually just tend towards buying more regen because I think that most people are really bad at taking trades around the runes and in the first couple of levels. So if I just trade all of my regen for all of their regen, most of the time they have none left and then your carries game is super easy. As position three, this is Wink X11 again, by the way. If you can't backdoor, is it better to keep buying regen to survive in lane and lose gold oh you mean that you mean uh cut, cut, the, creep cut wave. the creep wave yeah um people have all sorts of words for that actually uh, is it better to keep buying regen to survive the lane and lose gold or go jungle and give the lane to a support uh honestly i think <sighs> probably for an off laner you want to just buy regen and just keep getting getting fucked up in the lane <laughs> to for lack of better terms uh just because like it's your job a lot of the time to to apply a lot of pressure and if you go jungle your support's not going to apply a lot of pressure but if you go jungle and you can do it efficiently and your support actually can take the lane then then that's fine um i actually played a game the other day and uh, ellie was watching and she was like uh saying that i that i played really well during the game and i genuinely felt what i what i'm about to say uh, i was like i don't i didn't play well what won us the game was the fact that I rotated out of my, I was a clockwork mid and I was against a void spirit and we had a Jakiro that was just in the offlane as position four. And I, I, I made the call with like, okay, this guy's owning me mid. He was basically outskilling me because I'm not a mid player and I was clockwork mid for God's sakes. So he's like level seven when I was six. So I got six. And I was like, I'm rowing. I'm rowing. I'm never going back to my lane. Somebody take the lane. And Jakiro went mid and lo and behold, he actually fucked up the void spirit mid because void spirit is just all physical resist. And Jakiro just kept using his, magic spells on the void spirit so he couldn't lane and then i ran around killing people as a level six clockwork and jakira ended up being a higher level than me so sometimes giving a support a lane is actually the play uh but i didn't go clockwork jungle i went around and i roamed so i was still applying pressure in, in the game which i think is often times a lot better than uh, just jungling unless you're a hero that actually can can carry the game from a jungle like a kunkka getting a a um uh radiance or something like that but as an offlaner a lot of the time it's your job to be the one that's pressuring and fighting on the map so be careful about doing it but yeah if your support's going to get huge then it's pretty it's pretty solid yeah you know it's it's also okay to in the laning stage sometimes you just get into these scenarios where like you can keep buying region but you're just eating so much harass let's say you're like i don't know you're a, a fairly slow melee hero and you're against like a, a lich a lich or like a, a a bane or a disruptor or one of those you know suckers some of these very annoying heroes and it's like you can you can walk up but you can't really do anything you can also just go like be a support kind of and gank another lane and like roam and, and just get kills make them tp out of the lane and then you can tp back after they've left and then that's that's another yep. way to approach it definitely uh, party says I'm spamming Bane position five right now on my last sprint to six k. Uh, to get my ranked roles games, I marked all roles. Uh, I got position three, and I first picked Bane as I am used to. All right, <laughs> that's interesting. My team picked around it with a Huskar troll duo core. We destroyed their safe lane with Bane Snapfire. I ganged their TA mid, and we completely steamrolled the game. Bane feels so good right now. Do you think Bane position three is pickable? Well, I, I gotta say, people did experiment with that for a while. I have yep. seen that before. That's that's not 
that doesn't sound that bad now that I'm like really thinking about it. You're tanky in the lane. A lot of heroes you can apply pressure to. I, I suppose there's some that you can't, but most you can, and you're a stunner, and you can build tanky items. I feel like it's probably pretty decent, honestly, if you have a dual lane, and, you, and, and the lane isn't really bad for you. So, yeah, go for it. I don't know. That sounds pretty good. Sure, why not? You know, just give it a give it the old try, you know? It might work out. Clearly did for you once, so keep that keep, that means it's perfect. That's good. Keep experimenting with it if you want to. Yeah. I I I love the I love questions like this because you know, there's things we see in Alchemy Answers and Replay Review where initially I'm like, "Oh, that's got to be shit." And then I think about it, it's like, "Oh, you know what? That's actually not that bad." Like people maxing uh the stun on Slardar, for example. I remember we saw that a couple weeks ago and we were like, what the fuck are you doing? And then when you think about it, it's like you look at you look at the 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 bash and it scales by 0.1 seconds every time. It's like, do you really need to have that maxed out if it's scaling by 0.1 seconds? And and now people are maxing the sprint. And with how the sprint scales from one to two, I think it goes from like five percent river speed to like 20%. The sprint level two is pretty value. So yeah, go for it. Just because it's not in the meta doesn't mean you you uh, doesn't mean it's not good. It just means people haven't discovered it yet. There's so many combinations of things you can do that there just aren't enough pros to discover all of this shit. So don't trust them. Those those pros, they don't know what they're doing. Yep, hundred percent. Okay, Wink Eleven X Eleven says if you want to get decent at all roles so that you don't suck uh, when you don't get a choice, but also not lose your skills of your main role, what ratio do you suggest for practice? Half, I would say probably like play at least two fifths of your, or sorry, three fifths of your games or two fifths of your games on your normal role, and then in the other ones play play the. the That's not the how random, math works, uh, Jenkins. Well, I said, I said, I said like a, around half is what I meant, like like some number around half, so like two fifths, like three fifths. That's that's like within that within that uh, bracket. All right, I just what, had to call you out because you've been making all these false statements about math lately with logarithms. No, I haven't. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. My God. Oh, God. Don't even get me started. I, I'm saying that there's a bracket around the halfway point, and that's where you want to be stuck in that little bracket. And it, like half or a little bit less than half of your game should be on your main roll. And then you're, you're good. You're solid. I don't know. Do you, is, do you agree with that ratio? Is that, is that what you do? I know you, you basically spam Paul's five, right? me um yeah yeah lately i've just been queuing rank classic and i'm literally excited to to do that after we stop this because i just got informed that everybody's queuing ranked classic and it's like jesus no wonder my games have been dog shit yeah so i'm I, super stoked for that <laughs> i don't know i was getting so many games where it was like i was getting pose five and then my carry was like ancient two and i was like why why is this game being made right now and it was just over and over and over so i just started queuing classic and now i'm in these games where almost everybody's the same mmr and it feels a lot better yeah i think i'm gonna go for that i'm definitely gonna go for that next because uh, you know no offense to like rank a thousand players out there or whatever but i'm getting these games and jesus christ i had a guy i had a guy and here's the problem is that account buying is such a common thing that in these rank a thousand games, you are likely to have an account buyer on actually one of the teams, which I know that sounds ridiculous, but hear me out because it's not just, I think that this person's bad and therefore they're an account buyer. This guy had like 50% of his games on Southeast Asia. Meepo was his top pick, 79% yep. win rate. And then every other hero was like Lich, Disruptor, Snapfire. <laughs> That's such, like, 30%, such 30, a classic, 30%. dude. <laughs> Yeah, and and, and then I looked, I looked, and I I went on Dota Buff, and I went this month, and the guy had a fifty, uh, fifty games this month, and a twenty five percent win rate, <laughs> and I was just like, you have to actually be negatively impacting your game. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not very good at Dota. There's plenty of games where all I focus on is not negatively impacting the game, and I win half of my games. Yep. Like the the default, if you just do nothing but hit creeps you are going to win like 40% at least of your games. You're going to be fine. I mean, that's not a good ratio. But that's better than 20%. 
This guy is like negatively impacting games by holding wards and getting wards dewarded and feeding and losing lanes and shit. It's like, man, if you're going to buy an account, at least try your hardest to not fuck up the game. Oh, it's insane. So anyway, I'm back to rank classic. Cause oh my God. I'm done with this. It's also so funny that, I mean, again, I, I don't want to like flame people too hard, but it's almost always the Go lowest, in, the lowest Just MMR person up. that is the most vocal and, and like tilting almost always it's almost always the lowest mmr person who is like i I don't even know what it is i don't know if they're like ashamed of their rank or or what but like today for example i had a legend player in one of my games because he was partied with a divine player who had queued and he was playing support and i asked him to stop jungling on support and please play in the lanes behind me and he called me the n-word and told me to fuck off and i was like okay that person's got a lot more problems than just being a legend three in Dota, <laughs> exactly. man. let me tell you <laughs> let me tell you i had that happen in a game i had this this i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put him on blast this ice queen 87 guy or whatever, he's on Do- <laughs> doze esports with speed gaming total piece of shit he's probably gonna murder me for saying that but uh, in one in one game he was just dropping the end bomb constantly and uh I was like, dude, like, even if you are actually racist, you could lose your job for doing that. He's like, I don't fucking care. My life doesn't matter. It's like, oh, shit, dude. (laughs) All right. All right. Yeah, Uh, yeah, man. Some people, some people Dota will expose you to just have serious issues that if it wasn't for an online matchmaking on a video game, you would never, never interact with these people. Seriously. No, Ice Queen 87. I I don't know where, where the why they both have the same name or whatever, but I don't know if he took Masons or if it's an NA Dota thing, but he's a different person. <laughs> Google him. He's on Doze Esports. He, they're, they're probably playing in the qualifier. No, they played one game and then forfeited the rest of them. He's a fucker, so I don't, I don't you know, it's, it's like <laughs> calling out somebody who's racist. I really don't feel bad. I, in my opinion, these, these racist people are basically animals, so... Uh, anyway, uh, Arboreal Phoenix says, uh, Jenkins, for coaching... Oh, sorry, this is this is actually... I skipped the question. Uh, party says, Bane... Uh, okay. Jastraga says, I lost 400 MMR in two weeks. Any advice? I tried playing less, spamming, talking to my teammates, not talking at all, flaming, not flaming. <laughs> not <laughs> flaming. I'm lost. I actually started to dodge AM hard carry in my team, and that stuff. Um... Take an extended break from five. Dota, sir. Whew, yeah, that sounds um that sounds like you need to not play. Yeah. Not any play anytime Dota. you're looking in all these other places for a solution, it's time to just not play Dota for a while. I say this is somebody who has gone through many periods of losing hundreds of MMR while trying so many different tactics and de- heroes and roles and etc. to try and fix the issue and then the the real issue is that i'm just dog shit for this period and i need to not play like dog shit and the only way to not play like dog shit is to reset entirely which means that you can't play and then you have to like kind of relearn yeah <laughs> it's just you're you know it's it's just pure instinct and downward spiral at this point from what i'm reading <laughs> like yeah. it's 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 just emotion and uh, you need to you need to clear the old system and come back. And I guarantee you, if you've lost 400 MMR in two weeks, you are so much better than how you're currently playing. And <laughs> all you need to do is chill. Yeah. And just like Donnie said, I'm saying this as somebody who, Jesus Christ, the amount of times I've gone through this at this point, too many, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Take a break. Play something chill that'll also give you a little bit of a dopamine rush. That's what I would say. Uh, for me, it's Minecraft. I play Minecraft. You know, going through hell, killing demons and shit. Like, that makes me feel good, even though it's really easy. Uh, Dota's hard. That's that's the real problem. Uh, okay. Arboreal Phoenix says, Jenkins, for coaching, how many replays do you generally cover in one session? Uh, one to three, depending on how much I'm not shutting the fuck up. Uh, I've been wanting to compare and contrast a win and a loss to compare what I'm doing in games that I win versus what I'm doing in games that I lost. That sounds like a pretty good idea and what I need to work on. Uh, would that be covered in one session? Or do I need to schedule you for two sessions? This is very specific to my coaching sessions. That's even something you can do. Uh, it, that would be doable in, in one session, 
surely two two replays is not that much yep. usually it's like 30 minutes you get to really the problem in the replay and and if you don't then it's just because you didn't click far enough into the replay you didn't click to the right throw or whatever yeah I and we do it we do it we do it in 10 minutes every week so yeah we're, we're pretty good at it pretty exactly. solid uh, Party says, uh, why do you think that Caudle went from a 49% win rate to 60% win rate in pro-level pubs? I love that hero, but he's played only a few games at that level. I played him when he had a 49% win rate, but he felt like garbage. He didn't get changed, but has an insane win rate now. Any ideas why the builds I checked didn't change? That's why, Tommy? because he's not being played very much. We talked about this at the very beginning of the stream, which is that I'm looking at Dota 2 Pro Track right now, and Caudle has a very high win rate, but he also only has 70 picks, which means that coddle spammers only are playing it or it's the perfect coddle game so i also think that the hero is probably okay it's just what is the perfect coddle game as a coddle spammer yourself uh probably having a puck on your team that's pretty good oh because you can break the coil yeah with the with the, the little blinding okay what pairs well with the ulti like big team fight ultimates i suppose like damage S snap fire maybe oh yeah that's that hero man hero shits out damage i really like snapfire like phoenix is kind of funny because you just oh like, yeah you just you put it on the supernova egg. in the middle like right on the disco ball yeah lich i guess with the uh chain frost would probably be pretty good yeah i mean I, ulti, maybe. I would imagine that the hero is is somewhat unexplored in the current patch just because it got nerfed like six times and people stopped picking it entirely but yeah i'm sure it's reasonably good in yeah. the right game yeah seems like it uh, okay, Arboreal Phoenix says, uh, also, less of a personal question, I haven't heard much discussion from you guys about Ricky yet, and I haven't been able to listen for the past two to three days. Uh, I've gained about 500 MMR with Ricky alone in the past week, and I've been really liking the hero. Where is downfalls in places I should avoid picking him? He seems to be uh, just pickable, be pickable every game. I think he is actually pickable every game. I see a lot of people that are just Ricky spammers. It's I don't see it on Dota 2 Pro Tracker for some reason, but it's like a niche hero that that people are picking in safe lane. Uh, I would say as a position four, any other position in safe lane, it's probably kind of dog shit. But with the new, with the uh, new Ricky, with the with the new spells that he have, it has I should say, uh, he's actually quite quite good at uh, at safe laning. And I mean, he does so much damage. Actually, it's ridiculous. I, th I think that hero is really good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I saw it picked a few times in the qualifiers. Mason plays it. It's um. It's one of those heroes that really doesn't want to lose the lane. That's one of the biggest things. So don't pick it into a lane that's like unplayable. But most lanes are fairly playable because of how mobile you are. And you can just kind of like snipe last hits here and there and just get some farm. Um, I even saw a game where Nico Baby, <laughs> this is actually hilarious. Nico Baby walked from safe lane to off lane at level one, like 30 seconds into the laning stage. And he was level one at three minutes into the game because it took him so long to like, he had to like circumvent the mid lane and like then got to the bottom lane and realized that he didn't really want to be there. And he ended up coming back into the game and, and winning and being the most farmed strongest hero. And that was just through like wandering around the map, sniping kills, not farming. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I've noticed. That's what I've noticed Ricky's do is they just, they like get, a blade of alacrity and then they hunt and then maybe they'll farm like one or two creep waves and then they'll hunt and then they'll get a diffusal and they'll hunt a lot of a lot of showing somewhere and then just walking across the map and looking for anything like courier kills yep uh just just very very active kind of like a gyrocopter except you also do the scouting for yourself which is kind of cool kind of like a nyx assassin except you're setting up for yourself and in other lanes it's uh yeah it's it's pretty cool I th I think the I think the hero's quite good and if you're having success with it don't stop playing it I'm actually surprised it's not picked more in the uh, current major qualifiers I think it's quite good yep I agree it's really good against like puck and void spirit and ember and these these heroes yep. that rely on mobility too stars says what is your secret Dota two conspiracy theory That's didn't an you question. It is a good question. It's a really good question. Didn't you say that you? Maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe you said this off stream. But did, weren't you? Didn't you think Ice Frog maybe didn't still work on the game? I, and you think that I didn't say that. I've seen that that theory being okay passed around a lot though. 
that's an interesting theory. And they're like keeping up appearances with his like social media and everything yeah, to kind of make it look like he's still, he's still working on it. Yeah. I, I know that there was uh, a lot of people that were saying that he didn't work on the game anymore after all the neutral items came out. They're like, obviously valve is just like going down the blizzard route and ice probably doesn't work there. That was not me who said that. It was just like a Reddit theory. Okay. I think that's so proven wrong by by 7.24. I, I, I yeah. think this patch is is fantastic. I, I actually enjoyed 7.23 in the first few days, but I, I said this at the time, and I, now I believe it, that I, I think I enjoyed it because it was total chaos, and I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. But it wasn't competitive at all. Right. And uh, 7.24, is it takes all the good elements of 7.23, which I actually enjoyed. It's so because polished. Even, it's very polished. Uh, I love where the outposts are. I feel like knowing where to play on the map is a lot more obvious now, but you can still, you know, strategically decide things based on like what your team is good at doing. And it, it feels like your decisions actually matter. And then the, the neutral items still give you that like hit, you know, of, of, of dopamine where it's like, you get it. It's like, Oh my God, I get this. I have this item. Now I don't have to buy this or I have extra damage or whatever it is. It, it, it feels pretty, it feels pretty nice. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. I do want to answer Sam in chat because he's been asking us for the last like 10 minutes. Yes, I will be at ESL LA. I just need to figure out my flight situation because I'm extremely poor at the moment. So I may end up driving down, but I'll probably end up getting a flight. We we maybe could, we might, there's there's like a world in which we both go to that. Yeah. If we do, we're definitely going to do like a meetup. That'd be that'd be sick yeah. for anybody who's in the, in the LA area. Um, we didn't... Um, we didn't answer Stars' question, I suppose. We just talked about one that was what other people. Uh, my biggest Dota 2 conspiracy theory, Don, if you want to think of the one that you have. Um, you. I believe that the Shadow Pool is real. I believe that Valve is genius enough to come up with an algorithm that gives people enough hits of dopamine that keeps them addicted with win streaks. I feel like there are too many win streaks and loss streaks that <laughs> well okay okay here's the thing it's a conspiracy the so I don't, I don't know <laughs> no 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 I'm not saying that I'm not saying that I'm saying I think the matchmaker whether this is intentional or not is optimized to give you win streaks and loss streaks. And that is why I always recommend to people, and I always, if I if I lose two games in a row, I quit. If I'm unless I'm being totally insane, if I lose two games in a row, I quit because you get the same people, you get the same level of behavior score variability, all of these different things that just make the game like totally unplayable. Or you could basically do nothing, and you would you would still win. That's that's my like conspiracy theory that I believe the most. But I'm like. Jeez, I don't know. I'm like fifty percent believing it, maybe even forty percent. I'm not like a hundred percent believing it. It's it's just that if there's one that I had to pick, I would say I would say that one. Um because I can understand I can understand why they would why they would do that to to keep people playing the game. It's it's not the most far fetched. Yeah. I I mean I don't know. I I guess I, I would believe that maybe I'm at like twenty percent because I, I feel okay, like I feel fair. like there is maybe a little bit of credibility to that, but I definitely am not a true believer by any means. Um, I would say I'm that just saying if you go to the Valve website, there's like economist positions, there's like psychologist <laughs> positions. It's true. Like they have these people working at the company, you know, like they have they have PhDs and shit in these in these fields. You know, you have to you have to consider that. Like, what are those people doing if not something like that? Speaking of which, my conspiracy theory is that Valve is going to continue to artificially boost the TI prize pool. Um, and I don't mean that they're going to like pour a bunch of money in and say that it came from other people, although they certainly could do that and we would just never know. Like, There's no way that anyone would ever find out. I'd believe it. Um, but I Even think... It's fraud. <laughs> I think I think they will just continue to like hold back good content for the entire year until TI as they did last year. I mean, dude, the stuff the battle pass that we had for last TI was unfucking believable. I see. I see. Okay. Like, That's th interesting. This is why there is just awful chests being released. Like these chests are terrible. They just they don't fucking care. It's just like here's a little bit of like 
if you guys so you these think videos. that these are little like fillers that they're putting out while everybody's working on like the big ti stuff yes and i think that ti 10 is going to be a turning point for our game where it's going to determine whether dota will die in a couple of years or whether it's going to like have a massive resurgence i think that ti 10 is going to be the moment where they release all these tutorials which have been potentially leaked they're going to completely change the dpc to be a league based thing they're going to obviously give us a battle pass that's fucking bananas and they're going to actually start advertising the game that'd be cool <laughs> that'd be really cool I mean, i'm a fan of that or they're going to do none of that and dota is going to be shit in like six months no, after ti no way no valve is they know what they're doing man um they may not be the most vocal but i feel like they 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 have the brains they have the manpower to do it too yeah, I mean, uh, okay. I just find it I just find it hard to believe that they would want to let a money source go that makes them like a hundred no million dollars no every year. No fucking way. No way. Dude, Dota makes way too much money. It does every year. No way. Yeah. People are like, well, they have Steam and that makes them billions of dollars, but dude, it's like they get a hundred million dollars in like two months. Of doing well, the thing is, you also have to consider that Valve has people that work in Dota. Yeah, they have people exactly. that work in Steam. So the people that work in Dota are not going to want to see Dota go down the drain. Like there's 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 groups of people that are interested in the different things. So just because Steam is doing well and maybe Dota is making less money than Steam doesn't mean that people they can choose what they want to do. So right, I, I think I think uh, yeah, and I, I'm I'm. I believe in Valve. I mean, with the with the structure of the company, obviously, there's like there's mistakes that that are made, but it's uh... you don't become a multi billion dollar company by being idiots. <laughs> like... Yeah, of course. Jesus Christ, Muhammad, why are you so set on Wyvern Core? Yes, it's good. It's fine. The problem is, how do you fucking lane? That's the problem. I can never lane that shit. I don't know what to do to make the laning good. I just forty four base damage or whatever it is is terrible. Yeah. It's rough. It's not good. It's really at all. rough. All right. Jastraga. The guy who lost 400 MMR had a 56% win rate. Could I become a dog shit player in two weeks? Yes. It's very quick. It sneaks up on you. I guarantee you. Yep. That's it. We're done. Nice. All right. Let's take two or three questions from chat. I'm just going to look through. Scroll up and down, scroll up and down. Here's a question. I have 3,600 hours of Oracle, Oracle support stuck in Crusader because carries think Disruptor mid and Zeus jungle is a thing. How can I get out? The reasons that you stated are not why you're stuck in Crusader. First and foremost. There was actually a video that I made the other, the other day where there was some post-game chat from me to one of my teammates below what i was filming and it was <laughs> what, what was it? it was just accept that you're shit that's the step one to getting better at this game that's true that's so true actually and that's i mean that's honestly my advice to you is just accept that you're crusader for a reason and stop looking elsewhere than your own play like it's it's your play a hundred percent i mean if you've played more than like 50 games that's that's yes. true you know even large enough sample size that that's that's got to be true you're the only consistent variable amongst yes. all of the games so yeah that's uh it's but that's the thing is like it's actually a warm and fuzzy feeling when that happens when you realize like it's me yeah like because you can you actually can fix it change it yeah, <laughs> yeah you have control over it yeah. As opposed to they're not imagine living in a world where you just were born into a shit life and there was nothing you could do. You'd want to fucking kill yourself. But if you're born into a shit life, it might feel like there's nothing you can do. But there's, you know, there's something that you can do. I mean, I guess it depends on where you live, but 
you know, generally, generally speaking, there's a lot of things that are within your control because you literally have control over, over your own body. You could go live in the goddamn African Sahara or whatever, you know, you could live wherever and, and, and do whatever. So it's, it's, it feels good to know that it's, it's within your control because it's not something that's like hopeless. I guess all I'm saying is hopelessness is something that's, that's awful. And uh, yes. it gives you hope to be like, I'm shitty. Because it's like I'm shitty, but I'm not gonna be shitty. I you know? I love I love the way that that Gary Vaynerchuk says it. You know that I I like listening to Gary V from time to time, and he's like, no matter what your situation is in life, there is somebody who has made it from where you are, and unless sure. you are are literally, like, if we if we had to rank every single person in the entire world in the human population. If you are literally number one as being like the lowest person on the entire totem pole in the entire world, that is the only person who is allowed to potentially complain about their situation. If you if you're not literally the worst ranked person in the entire world in terms of how your life is working out right now, you can't complain because somebody else has already made it past. It's true. It's true. And even then, like, you know, if you're if you're talking dota there's so many other let's say you're the lowest rated player in dota there have been people in other things that were the shittiest at a point yeah and then they rise up so it's like sure in dota but there's been so many people and there are so many people that it's happening all the time and you just need to figure out what the hell it is that they're doing god i remember probably one of the one of the most like um I, I suppose exciting moments for me in life was was playing at uh, WCA, which was a premium major tournament before there were majors in China. We played against uh, Wings. We played against Alliance. Like after they had one TI, well, post post TI winning Alliance. I think it was like when they weren't that good, but they were still pretty good. But they weren't the you know the TI caliber Alliance exactly, but good teams. And uh, I remember saying to my team that there is a universe in which we like we all believed in the multiverse and there is there is a universe in which we win this so let's make this let's like do what it takes to make this that that universe and uh i i think that that is that is true for um just life in general it's like if you and you know and, and dota skill in general is like there there is a universe where you are even shittier than you are in terms of <laughs> mmr and you get 7k in a month a, a month you know you play all day every day you commit to it that, that universe exists if you can think of it it exists so what the hell is the difference between you and that person nothing literally nothing because i'm that's part of the hypothesis right i'm saying that this is you this is the other universe that exists where all of the constraints everything in the universe is the exact same except that person gets 7k and you don't so just do what it takes it's physically possible so just do it right i mean it's like people are like how do i get, how do i get ripped how do i get muscles you sleep you eat you work out drink lots of water okay cool how do, how do i lose weight Exercise, eat at a caloric deficit. Literally, those two things doesn't matter. Anything else? <laughs> like, this is how these things are possible. And if you're not doing that, then that's not that's why you're not there. So, if if you if you think you're in Crusader because you have bad picks on your teammates and you've been playing the same hero for thirty six hundred hours or whatever it was, and you're still Crusader. Clearly, you're not learning very much from every game that you're playing. If I played one hero for 3,600 hours and I hadn't improved at all, I would probably not play the game anymore. But somebody else who's in your exact situation in another universe is having the same thing happen, and, and they're improving. So just be that, be that guy. Be that one. Be the, be the guy who watches replays. Be the guy who actually stops blaming their teammates. Blames yourself. Yep. Yep. All right, Boys. guys. Oh, okay. Oh, we have one want, more question. You want to go? Go for it. He says, "Is taking a break and coming back fresh a good way to play Dota, or practicing skills and playing two games a day, keeping up with the meta, the way to go? How does Ana fucking do it?" 
how does Ana do it? I don't know, man. But that I, guy's an exception. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I would guess that the biggest thing, I mean, the biggest thing for me is at times I feel pressured to gain MMR. And I feel like if any time that I'm free of that, where I'm just like, I just go and I just play a game of Dota and I'm like, this is great. I'm playing Dota. I win every single one of those games. I'm, I, I'm sure that that's probably just what on is like. He just like only plays Dota when he really wants to play Dota. And that's why he's so fucking good at the game. Cause he just has so many positive experiences. Dude, like... He's like, he's like the, the type of guy that he only plays TI. Cause he's like, sure. That'll be fun. Right. And then after TI is like, that was too exciting for me. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> and he just happens to get invited to the things that like also earn him millions of dollars. But he's basically just choosing what he what he enjoys doing. And I, I well, I have informa inside information that he is a gamer. I'll just say that. Um he he plays uh he just when he's not playing Dota, he's playing other games. It's yeah. not some crazy like he's going back to school. That's why he's not playing on OG. No, he's playing fucking CSGO, man. Yeah. He just <laughs> likes playing video he games. Likes, he is the the absolute god gamer. Uh, he's just like the best gamer that that the Lord Gaben has given us in, in a long time. So that's yeah. just that's just the way it is. It's actually cool. Uh, Gorg C was um, casting the OG games, and at the end of the last one, when they qualified, he had Seb and No Tail and Jerix all on a call with him on Discord, and he actually asked them about what it was like to have Anna. <laughs> be this like strange scheduled person who would like watch random videos like during drafts and <laughs> just like couldn't practice the way that the, they normally did and Seb was like yeah he's like he just the normal boot camp environment just like did not yield results for him he, just, he couldn't function in this like hardcore grind whereas like Seb would play like six great six scrims and then go play like, 10 pubs Anna was like, can't do it. And so they just like allowed Dude, him that's to do his who, thing. That, that, that's how New Sham is too. New Sham's like, I swear to God, I play like two Dota games with him every two weeks. And it's the freest MMR. I just, like, he came back and you know, he, you know what he was doing? He saw that there was one neutral item slot. So he had like an arcane ring in his backpack and a shovel. And he was just moving them out into the slot as he needed it. Yeah. And I, like, yeah. You should and, and, I, and I was like, of course you should do that. But I saw somebody else do that. I was like, that's good. He just, his first game in, that was what his intuition was. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm just keeping these items. I'm going to use them when people need. And it's like, fuck, man. Why can't my brain work like that? <laughs> God damn it. Some people are gamers, man. Some yeah. people are gamers. I, I definitely have thought that that was the way that neutral items should be used now. It was like... Especially for like supports, if there's ever a shovel that's just sitting in the neutral stash, I'm super pissed. I just oh. I, I take it and I I keep you, it. In my I backpack. carry that shit all the time. Yeah, yeah, I do. I I like if I'm running around the map, I'll use faded brooch. Mm -hmm. If I'm fighting, I'll use the dragon scale. If I if I you know I'm just chilling, I'll use the 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 shovel to to get a bounty rune or to to get some some salves. Yep, it's pretty cool. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This has been an awesome episode. We appreciate you all. Uh, episode 65, right? 66? One of those things. It's another 66. episode of Alchemy Answers. And 69 soon. We're getting to the... We're getting close. Uh, yeah. Let us know. Number. Leave a comment. Tweet at us. Whatever. Let us know what we should do for our, our 69th special episode. Maybe we'll do it naked. Maybe. Just be sexual with it. Or maybe what we could do is we could swap cam locations. That so we'd be like, wow, we would be like sixty ninety our cams. Up. Yeah, that's crazy. That'd be legit. All right, guys, that's crazy. I'd rather <laughs> do it naked. We'll see you next time.